I don't understand how this keeps happening. How are we here three times in a single week? Yes, another supply chain attack happened again on NPM. And yes, a lot and a lot of repositories were affected. Now, this one, codenamed Shai Halud. Uh, obviously, the tokens must flow. Okay, the tokens, just give me the tokens. There are so many twists to this one. This one is an absolute masterclass in just destroying an ecosystem. Now, what makes Shai Halud different here is that instead of just simply being something in which the end user ends up downloading an NPM package, and then what the post install script goes and takes all your credentials and it's like, nah, I got your tokens, yes, hmm, yes. Instead, it doesn't just do that. It spreads itself from repository to repository to repository and just keeps on growing. So this isn't just simply a phishing attack. It's like all the attacks in one. Also very impressive that it's this Singularity NX hack that happened just last week. This appears to be by the same crew. Okay, they're on a they're on a hacking spree. Okay, this is a this is a double hack. I mean, they might even get to a triple hack. Potentially, a, a hacktacular is on the horizon. All right, let's just jump right into it. So, how did this hack happen again? Now, first off, it likely occurred due to a phishing scam. That's what everything is saying. I asked Grok to find some sources. It just appears that phishing was the root cause. Some small repository got had. The unknown repository is likely this uh, RxNT authentication, which has been deprecated, hasn't seen any publications for a long time, then out of nowhere, four days ago, got a new version, which was going to be 005, which it looks like it's been removed already, and 006, which both contained this attack. Now, the attack took advantage of the exact same thing again, a little patch version update. Now, I don't know why this keeps happening. I swear I keep saying this. Don't auto upgrade patch versions. It's like a massive security vulnerability. This is like the easiest way to be had ever. Yet it just keeps happening. Why? Why do you keep doing it? Say no, lock your versions. Now, obviously this is really, really difficult because you may lock your versions and you may be the good, you know, the good citizen in this situation. But remember, package managers are in fact evil and people who don't lock their versions can still get you because you rely on them. They rely on other things. Those other things get, you know, supply chain attacked. Boom, it trickles all the way down to you, despite the fact that you did all the right steps. And Ginger Bill maybe is right. Maybe Ginger Bill is correct. Automation of package dependencies is walking into hell, and we should all avoid it as much as we possibly can. I don't know. Maybe he is right. Mr. Quantum Mechanic Scientist who moonlights as language creator. Anywho, so after the patch version has been installed, a post install script uh, again gets installed. And this time, instead of using like, say, the AI to go through your system and get all the credentials, which is what happened last time with the NX attack, which by the way, was just a couple days ago. Okay, no sleep for the weary here. We just got to go from one attack to the next attack. This one instead uses something called Truffle Hog, which by the way, insane name yo girl i'm gonna slip my truffle hog on that computer and i'm gonna get so many tokens you don't even know a truffle hog is like a secret scanning tool you're supposed to use it on your repository or use it in ci to make sure you're not accidentally leaking tokens so like its idea is actually good unless if someone uses it for not good then it's bad then it's really bad so anyways after getting your tokens so this is where the things take a turn. So unlike the previous one, all, unlike most of these attacks, which take your tokens and then throws them all up onto a repository and it's like, yes, I got all your tokens. This time, instead, just immediately goes to work on your GitHub. Oh, we're going to update some CI. We're going to put in some new post installation. We're going to publish to NPM. It does all the things to attempt to go publish patch versions with its new installation process that has the post install that does and does it again. So that way, if one unknown repository gets had during CI of the next one, it goes and just gets, it's just flying through the system. That means you're vulnerable on your desktop if you have tokens that can be taken advantage of. That means your CI is vulnerable if your CI has the tokens that can be taken advantage of. The hide, like literally hide your kids. Hide your wives, hide your husband, because they're stealing everybody's tokens out here. So as this thing has progressed, it started off with 40 NPM packages that have been compromised. Now, 
it's up to 180. This is only just a few hours later. My guess is that by the end of the week, it'll be like 24 billion just by the growth rate here. I want to take a look at who got affected because as you can see, there's just so many packages. But I think the one that just, it just makes me laugh, even though we shouldn't laugh, I'm laughing. CrowdStrike, yes. The company in which sells security solutions is in fact currently a distributor of a worm attack. I mean, th this is beautiful. This is, this is, <laughs> I mean, this is, all life is art but unknown to thee. This is like the most just amazing situation of irony that has ever been created. CrowdStrike. Blue screens of death, or let me have all your tokens. Which, 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 which one do you want, huh? Also, there's a whole bunch of other. This popular author control got had through Tiny Color. Tiny Color apparently was the first version, which by him having those, he accidentally ended up getting had again further and further. As you can see right here, 4.11 and 4.12 were both bad versions, of which when you look at Tiny Color, four, hey, 420, version 420 is the safe one. Okay, hey, nice. I see what you did there. That was a good move. At the end of the day, I think the biggest takeaway here is stay away from auto upgrading. Take your time, understand what you're using, and maybe, perhaps, I know this is going to be a crazy idea, maybe we don't need all of these dependencies. Maybe the singular function that you're using doesn't need to be an entire dependency with its own compounding effect of security vulnerabilities. And in the day and age of AI, left pad's pretty easy to generate. Oh, you need some sort of, uh, you know, HSV to RGB converter? Pretty easy to generate. Right? Like this isn't even something that you need to first go off and get massive expertise in. The cost of creating one-off functions instead of downloading an entire repository worth of functions is now so low. You barely need anything. Maybe these repetitive attacks will get people thinking more and more about the dependencies they're taking. And hopefully you will think about it too. Because even if, again, even if you fix your patches, it doesn't mean the things you depend on fix your patches. Everybody needs to do it together. Okay? We're all in this together. Well, I'm not in this together. Okay, I don't like to program JavaScript. I use Elixir, by the way. So not my problem. Okay, hey, that's, that's actually your problem. We're not all in this together. You're in this together. You, you NPM enjoyers. Okay. Yuck. By the way, if you like this, press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, press it because we're getting close to a million. Okay, I'm like 10% away. The name is the Primogen.